Good googly moogly? Good googly moogly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Somebody sure someone must on. have, Joey. <laughs> was, People that. steal everything. Did you see this? This is me yeah, this high school is... Duncan Trussell. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Did you see that? Unfucking believable Joey's on the far right. <laughs> That's insane. That, look at my you were so cute. Check out the sexy legs. Lucky seven. Yep, Can you get it so just his whole body fills the no, screen? I was 44. I was 44. It was no lucky seven. Yeah, like seven. that. Look at that. <laughs> wow. That's so crazy. <laughs> wow. Look at you, dude. So how old are you in this picture? 14. 14. God damn, Joe. You cute. You're cute as a button. Yeah, look at David Ruiz. Turn around and talk into the microphone so That's other uh, people can hear this too. Right. <laughs> that kid right look, there. Joey, the it's afro. up on this screen too. That kid with the afro was a very interesting story. This guy right here. Because we were we were a horrible basketball team at McKinley. Can you go full screen? Brian, and he so moved in to our level. neighborhood. Does it do that? He could, he could jump. He was five foot eight, but this kid could fucking jump like Julius Irving. So he was Dominican. His name was Louis Hernandez. I'm from Jersey. They just planned it. They just cut it short and called him Louis the nigger. They said, fuck it. We don't care if he's Dominican. We're not going to even think about that. We're just going to. This is David Ruiz. He's they, talk, they, they called him that to his face, too. Like Louis the nigger. And, when we were in the and did, he, did he get pissed? Fuck you, bitch. Yeah, he was a tough kid. He get mad at you when you Sometimes, called him? Sometimes. Like, I think he bit slapped <laughs> two or three people. But the best thing he did was we used to do acid. When we first started smoking weed in the eighth grade, we'd go behind the soccer field in North Bergen, and he let us blow smoke into his afro and see the smoke come out of the afro. <laughs> <laughs> How cool was he? I remember that. I remember I you told you, me that. This was the crew. So I knew all these motherfuckers. Scroll oh. down to the, all right, this kid here is now. No, up, up. That kid there was David Black. We graduated together, and I knew him after the fact. And one night he came into Joe and Mary. He's like, look, you got a car. You got to give me a ride. If you give me a ride, I'll give you a rock. All right, we gave him a ride. He gets out of the car in West New York. About three minutes later, he comes running back, bleeding, with his hair pulled. I go, what happened? He goes, I went and robbed my sister. I mean, he was serious. He had coke rocks for everybody, a wow. chunk of his fucking hair. She caught him on the way out as he was pulling out of the window. And she just took, he was bleeding his and everything. His sister, he robbed his, his sister, sister through the window. Fucking, oh, my God, it's terrible. Oh, my this, God. This is when cocaine was king. This is 83, dog, at 3 in the morning. You asked me for a ride. I got to do what I got to do, you know? Think of how crazy that statement is. This is, is fucking crazy. Joey, I wish you could do your own Stand By Me. Like, <laughs> oh my God. so crazy. <laughs> my fucking God, this is. Joey, when, who, who is this? Why is his head so small? When I got this picture, <laughs> I nearly, which one, the <laughs> Filipino the, kid? No. Oh, this guy, guy right on the right left. Here, right. That kid's like a multi uh, gazillion and now. His family owns a tow truck company in northern New Jersey, New York City. If so you get towed, his family is the one that owns it. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, I believe you. This is fucking crazy shit here. Though. I believe you. It's fucking crazy, man. So, so 1978? Somebody, sent me this. Somebody sent me this yesterday while I was eating dinner. Wow. And I almost had a fucking heart attack. A friend That's of mine incredible. Goes, Look what I found looking through yearbooks. And that's when I was an innocent. No, I was smoking dope then. I was no innocent then. I was smoking dope. I was finger banging people. <laughs> <laughs> I like you can still be innocent. Played hoops. <laughs> you can still be innocent and finger banging. It was just me and my mom at the house. Yeah, yeah, I was okay. I was okay. I wasn't crazy then. Where I grew up in Jersey, the PAL was geared more towards boxing. Mm. When I was in New York City, it was a it was a place that they had like a boxing, they had a pool table, they had uh, you know sodas and shit like that activities. Mm -hmm. You made like ceramics and shit uh, depending on your age. In Jersey, it was more Mr. Gamio. Mr. Gamio was a Cuban dude and he ran the boxing program. And I knew his two sons, Julio and Caesar. They got me a job at Putnam Fuel, but they were like, "Listen, when you get the job, you got to rob." Putnam Fuel is right by Sea Caucus, off of Route Three. It's dirty. Truck people go in there, dirty Joe Rogan. <laughs> I lasted about three weeks before they fired me, but I left there. And after three weeks, the guy at night was a half a momo. His name was Freddie. Remember, I was telling you this. So we robbed him one night. We go, listen, we'll just go on there and beat Freddie up. We were like sophomores in high school. We'll put mask on me and Didi Cantero. And when he comes out, because in Jersey you pay the gas guy. You don't go into a store. You know they pump your gas. So if you rob the guy, you basically rob the joint. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Only Oregon and New Jersey is where the people pump your gas. Everybody right. else, you walk in with a card. So we were kids. We were like, let's rob fucked up Freddie. You know, when I worked there, I got to know Freddie. Freddie's wife looked like Honey Boo Boo's mother. <laughs> Freddie was a little guy, but Honey Boo, he, uh, his wife was like 400 pounds. And the only way she would let him fuck her is if he brought blow home. 
and he was a skinny, tiny guy like Eddie Bravo. She was like 390, and she would actually put the bikini on. And they they were such white trash. They lived in a studio apartment. They would rent the jacuzzi and put it in the living room. <laughs> These people were fucking. They lived on the third floor. They had a studio in Japan. Oh my god! And, and it was the it? worst building in the neighborhood. <laughs> and they had Black Marlowe. She was the only black girl in the neighborhood. Black Marlowe. I don't know what Black Marlowe is today, but she's the real Martin Luther King. She was the only black girl in a white neighborhood in Jersey. Though that girl took torture. Wow. She got tortured. I always loved Black Marlowe though. Marlowe was tight with me. Her mother was white. Something had happened. Her house was fucked up. That building was fucked up so I used to go with her to sell them blow and I remember F Freddie opening up the door and they were like a robe on and here's his fat wife in the living room with heels with a bikini on and he's like thank you for bringing it to me I'm gonna have like he really was like when you brought him the blow he was fucking thankful that you fucking like thank you man I'm gonna get some pussy up. tonight like she would not give me my hand job if he didn't have blow so <laughs> Finally, <laughs> so finally, one day, me and Didi Contero, we decide, let's go down there and rob this motherfucker oh. on a Saturday night. Let's wait till about midnight when he's got a grand on him. Because you, you don't drop till you get 2000 So every 2000 you make a drop in the floor safe, and you can't get back in there. So me and Didi went behind the building by Seacock, and it was right next to this hot dog place, Snappy Nappies. The rumor was well, that's where the Iceman killed somebody and put him in a tank. By snappy nappies. No, this is a real fucking area, Jersey. This is, and, and across the street was one of the biggest strip clubs on the East Coast. Not when I was there robbing Freddie. A couple of years after that, like the Army base. So you remember, if you lived in New York, they called this the Air Force base, some base or some shit. But when we were kids, we went there like at 12 and we took Freddie down, dog. We just tackled them and started like kicking them like they kicked the, whatever his name is, in that De Niro movie in the bar. Mm -hmm. And we took his little purse and we ran away. And he guessed it. Like it took him a week. He's like, "Did you guys rob me last night? Because we had masks on and shit." We're like, "Freddie, it wasn't us." He's like, "Yes, it was. I heard your voices." Then he came back to us. He's like, "Listen, I'll let you rob me once a month, but you got to split the money with me so I can buy an eight ball to fuck my wife." <laughs> <laughs> so once a month, we go down there and give Steady Freddie a beating, and we kick the fuck out of him. <laughs> Just on principle. And he let you do it? Just yeah, so he, he get, wanted to. That's the only way the jump. cops, you know, that's the only way right. the cops. And we did it like eight times. We so robbed, like, did you give him black eyes, bloody noses? Kicked him in the stomach a couple of times. That was it. We need him. Neon belly. I didn't even know what it was. There was no video back then either. No. No. Not so you had to leave marks on him. Yeah, you had to like kick him a few times. I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I had too much of a heart. So I always had to hire. Like I had to bring like one of my crazy friends that was having a <laughs> <laughs> that was having like a bad week. Oh. There's a kid in Miami today that every oh time, God. every time I play South Florida, he shows up with his girlfriend and he, he gets fucked up and he tells the story when I knocked on his door with a, a diagram on how we were going to rob Freddie. And he goes, that's when I knew that you were fucking for real. He goes, I, I was eating dinner with my family. You knocked on the door and had a sketch like the deal, how you were going to kick him and run into the weeds and go right to the coke dealer's house. Like, I had it planned. We had done it so many times. But I had to keep getting different partners because I couldn't hit Freddie. All I could do was tackle him. I was good at tackling him. And then we went to go down and have my friend kick him a few times. It was fucking horrible. But when you're 16, Joe, what the fuck, though? You got to have a good time, you know? <laughs> you got to have a good time. If you're not going to oh. kick study Freddie, who are you going to kick? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we would rob him once every six weeks. And finally it ended, I didn't bring him the eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> when that, I just did his eight ball. He got pissed off at me, and that was it. Shame on people, dog. People are just silly. Shame on people who take the time to fucking acknowledge that shit and to blow it but up. But we are in the Illuminati. We can't well, it's, that. you know, but also, oh, pe man. no, shut up, Brian. Yeah, but, but it's also people on both ends. Like, you're choosing to get upset about some really ridiculous shit. You ever shit. read a tweet and you go to that person's page and you go, I get it. Person's Once I page? read somebody's tweet and I go to their main page, I could put, I could add up right in one minute. I go, I get it. I get where he was coming from. Mm. I understand why he said that. He's a musician. He's that. He's a politician. He sells this. He right. likes, like, to this, today somebody hit me. And I ran, he's a Paul Reiser fan. I get it. You're a fucking mook. You know what I'm saying? I've never met a Paul Reiser fan. <laughs> so if you're a Paul Reiser fan, <laughs> shoot yourself in the fucking mouth right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my once goodness. I could, once somebody says, if I go to somebody's page and I see, like, music, and I know the music sucks, that's where it ends. Because if his choice of music sucks, that's what, if I don't see fucking one of my three on there, like I remember going to people's, like, there's two things I judge on people. I don't judge people by money or nothing. I judge people by their music collection. If I look at your music <laughs> collection and you, got, and you don't have Sabbath Paranoid, 
If you don't have the staples, Zeppelin II, those are the staples. <laughs> If you don't have Zeppelin too, why are we here? Why I'm not smoking dope with you? <laughs> why are you wasting my fucking time? I'm over here. You got like the dun, dun, best dun, of Judy Grant. Dun, dun, dun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the, and number two, when you open up somebody's refrigerator, there's certain yeah, it's true. You open that tells me everything. If you're a fucking mook, if you're a mutt, if I see like low end beer, you're a fucking mutt. I ain't never coming here. No Are more. there certain people that um, they have music laying around just because it's cool? Tons of them. That's yeah, why. Like, well, there's, a, like there's a generation yeah. of people yeah. that want to say, and I know this, and I don't hate you because I'm kind of the same way that they don't want to like Floyd. They, they prefer to listen to, oh, that's so commercialized. Yeah. Listen to Morrissey. You know, they make yeah. you feel bad. The worst being the Tom Waits era. <laughs> Those motherfuckers are the ones I want to punch them right in the fucking face. Because they're the ones, you're having a good time listening to something, you're bopping, and they want to like really impress like some fucking dumb chick with freckles or something. You know, that everybody's <laughs> fucked already. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Everybody fucked. All you need is tequila and a gram of blow, and she'll be sucking your dick in the fucking bathroom. Whoa. But you want to be cool. And look, 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 the Tom Waits. Have you listened to Tom Waits? Um, well, you yeah, want to yeah, fucking it's not my shoot style. yourself. Yeah, I don't that, like if it. If that's good singing, you want that, you're fucking an idiot. But the only reason that people would put that shit on is to try to overpower you with their fucking Star Wars. What do you call that? <laughs> the fucking thing with the mind the jetty. Force? The mind the Jedi jetty mind fucking tricks. trick. That's it. But, oh, he's so... Oh my God, he likes Tom Waits. Listen to that. Right, shit, they're though. trying to. Let make me themselves. sit you down with a gun next to your head. You tell me if that's true. <laughs> that's good singing. That's good fucking singing. That's the Beatles. Y'all fucking shoot you. I'll fucking put a gun to your fucking head. All right, telling me that's good music. You're fucking twenty years old. Knock it off. Like when somebody says they like the Dave Matthews Band, I will pistol whip you. Oh, to death. I will pistol whip you. I have satellite Amen. on the way up here. And I just, they were doing Exodus. Into me. They were doing Exodus by fucking Bob Marley. I almost crashed the oh, fucking man. car. Could Dave Matthews, loved? a white dude with no shoes on and a black dude playing that. It fucking it's too oh, it's too God. made up, Uncle Joey. Stop oh. it. I think he's got some good songs. Dave Matthews got a few good songs. Oh, please, you get me emotional. Thank God I got the other one. <laughs> Fuck this shit. I was too quiet over here. Oh, I hate God. all that shit. Just listen. You don't like it, just move over. I can't stand fucking Tom Waits. And the people you... like Tom Waits, look at them and go to their page. And they'll tell you the whole thing like that. That something ain't right. They're vegans. <laughs> something. they you know, stop the pil pilgrims. They care for something that you're like, really? You know, New Jersey... They've been dumping shit since the seventies. Yeah, since the sixties, bro. That that that's never gonna be. That's what's what's a re, what's that word? Irrevocable, irrevocable, reconcilable. No, the other word when you can't reverse. Irreconcilable. Irreconcilable. You uh, can never. Irre you can <laughs> never <laughs> reverse those things. That soil in New Jersey's gone. We all took a shot of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's uh, that soil in New Jersey's ah. gone. You know, I remember when they, when they built the Meadowlands. I remember how many animals all of a sudden I had in my living room. Because they tore all that down, that wildlife. And next thing you know, I was seeing, I remember one night seeing a possum the size of a small pit bull that jumped on a fucking tree. He jumped on a fucking tree. He saw me. Oh my you ever seen like a possum? You know, like in Jersey, yeah. they, they walk like a fucking ape, those things. When, when you call the police in Jersey, I got a possum here, they shoot the fucking thing. Yeah. They shoot the fucking thing. What does that uh, tell you? They don't shoot snakes. They, nah, they, they shoot the fucking possum because they play dead. And then when the cops leave, they fucking get up and they brush them. You can run over a fucking car with them. I would run them over with bicycles and throw they, rocks at them. They, they brush themselves they off. And they fucking, off. Yeah, they, what like, a fuck weird this. behavioral trait. They play they, dead. They yeah, fucking so play dead. Possum. That's where playing possum Oh, comes, I right? seen a yeah. fucking possum that looked at me one night at like four in the morning. I looked at him. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he jumped on a tree and went, it went, shh. Like he, he, he held onto the tree like oh a my fucking ape. <laughs> and I was like, this is fucking mind boggling. Joey. Oh, it's ringing. <laughs> Check this out. You think it's going to work? Yeah. Watch. I'm not sure if he's going to answer. There he is. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. You're on the radio. <laughs> tell, tell him you're live. You're, on the, you're live on the podcast. I'm telling you right now, dog. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. It must be beautiful to be Eddie Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> 2014. You got half, even, even before go to Child's Flags, that half fucking mess. <laughs> 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 they closed the fucking doors over there and go to Child's. That's how strong you are, dog. 
Ah! Close the doors. Oh, <laughs> flags at half mast. It's over. That's all I got to say. I love you, cocksuckers. I love you, man. We love you too, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, he came in and just dropped a bomb right there. He's the greatest. Yeah, Cooking the U Cowboys of M. is fucking amazing. The U of too. M one, though. The when U? Yeah. The U when he shows all the fucking Michael Irvin and those guys in front of clubs, and he goes, the Miami Dolphins used to ask the college guys to yeah. get them into the clubs. Yeah. Oh my that's, God. How that's how insane it was. If you watch the trailer to the insane. U, if you you'll, watch you'll go like, oh my what God. the, the fuck? Yeah. Thing. And I went was, to Florida State. It, we hated them, and I fucking saw it. I was like, sure. yeah. It was a bunch of black really? gangsters with a white coach <laughs> oh that God. told them, go out and be black gangsters, <laughs> motherfuckers. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. When does a white guy go, the blacker the better? The blacker the better. I want you to bring it back. I want high fives. I want fucking chains out high there. Fives. I want everything. I want you to talk, fuck not celebrate. I want everything. I want you to fucking humiliate these motherfuckers. And then the guy from Two Life Crew came on with his hose. He had a fucking VIP Uncle bag. Uncle Luke. And they would come out to sleep Luke, Luke, and have it home. Hit my dick them hard. And those bitches knew what time it was. <laughs> and that's all. Listen, there's two things that drive black people to different levels. That's when they hear Two Life Crew and when, and when they go to Red Lobster. Black people lose their mind at Red Lobster. Fuck Popeyes on Tuesday. You take you go to Sacramento Red Lobster on Friday at about 4 30 when they blow the whistle. Beep, 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 blow the whistle. It was here's a fun the, here's the thing club that to work. Me on. I had, he broke my ball. Mark Babbitt was one of the, let me just tell you the Mark Babbitt story. Mark Babbitt went to Freddie Soto and said, I'm looking for feature acts. So Freddie came up to me at the comedy store and he goes, Hey man, Mark Babbitt's looking for feature acts. Send him a tape. I refuse to send the tape, especially if I'm at the motherfucking comedy store. Okay, I'm not sending you no fucking tape. Why is that? I'm at Missy Shaw's comedy store. You want a tape? You take a ride up here. You want? I'll send you a copy of the 1045 spot I get. I ain't sending you no tape. I just refuse. I never sent no me a tape. I refuse. Especially people from LA that would call me up and go, we're putting together a TV show. We need a tape. Uh, 1115 at the comedy store. No really? tape. Really? Yeah, I don't fucking send tapes. Mark Babbitt, I sent him a blank tape. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay? I sent that jerk off finally because the manager I had, Ken Phillips, kept calling me saying, that guy from Houston keeps calling you. He wants you to send him a blank tape. I fucking didn't send him a tape for a year. Finally, one day I went to fucking Ralph's, bought a tape, put an envelope and sent, put Joey Diaz stand. There was none on the tape. You know that motherfucker called me a week later and said he loved my tape and he hired me as a feature actor oh, to yeah. open for Bobby Slayton? So fuck all you motherfuckers. That whole tape thing is a power move. When you go to a comedy club and you go to his office to get paid, he's got a TV and he's got a thousand tapes on him with dust on him. He don't watch those fucking tapes. That's his fucking power move, okay? Send me a tape. I, okay, in New York, oh. you go someplace and they sign you up and you come back and I say, listen, you get as many minutes as people you bring. You're earning your keep. That's one thing. I'd rather know where I stand than get fucked with. That's the leg I'm talking about. Really? You need a tape of me. You just saw him at the store. What the fuck do you need? Go back to if, the I'm good, if I'm good enough for Mitzi Shaw, why do you want a tape? Who the fuck are you in your fucking shit town to want a tape from me? I'm at the fucking major league of fucking comedy. The comedy store, you call me and you want a tape? Go fuck yourself. I'm not sending you a fucking tape. It's against my fucking will. It's like these people now with movies and TV. Joey, they, they want you to do a co-star, but they want you to send a reel. No, don't send shit. Joey, but they, no, it's a co-star. They could offer it to me. <laughs> And if they don't, they're fine. I'll do my podcast and I'll live another week. That's the mind. And eventually they'll go, this motherfucker isn't gonna. We might as well give it to him. I'm not doing it for that. You want me to fucking be a guest star or recur? You want to give me a series regular? I'll give you a fucking tape and I'll fucking come down and talk to you. But for a co-star, we've been doing this. Look at the IMDB. What fucking tape? Who the <laughs> fuck are you? Who the <laughs> fuck are you to decide? Let me see your fucking tape. Let me see your fucking tape. I ain't sending you no fucking tape. Even then, I had my fucking pride. Even then, I wouldn't send the fucking tape to him. <laughs> I refused. I finally sent him the blank tape. He gave me that answer, and I never had respect for none of them again. <sighs> because I found that it was a power play. It was like, you're on my court. Uh, you know, you want to give me some respect. What respect? What do you do? You're a pimp. You take 20% of what people come to the fucking door. What the fuck do you do? What have you done? You can't even play the fucking ukulele. What the fuck do you do? You, know, you can't even play the fucking ukulele. What the fuck have you done? That's my, that's where I'm coming from. I didn't want to insult club owners or Babbitt. They did great jobs. It was the shit they pulled 
that I didn't fucking like. I don't like sexual stuff on television early. Can you believe that? You I mean like girls day. making out? or like No, like let's say I'm watching Diane Sawyer and they have like a condom it's, commercial. It's I'll fucking lie. lose my mind. A condom commercial will bother you? Oh, it's still because little tampon kids? really destroys me. <laughs> tampon commercial, I want to choke myself. My wife is in the room or like your aunt's in the room or some older woman. Since ah! I was a kid, they did a Kotex commercial. I would sit there and look fucking straight ahead, dog. I never get so embarrassed in my life. I don't want them to ask me if I know, and I don't want to fucking know if blood, if blood comes out of your snatch and what you... <laughs> And what you put up there, that's got nothing to do with me. I'm just going to look straight at it. Don't even bring it up. You know how there's some women that's cute? Yeah. Like they think it's cute. Like, hold on, I got to go get a tampon. Listen, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know if you're bleeding. You just ruined everything for me. And, you know, I, I don't want to know. That's Does that really bother you? Uh, that bothers me. He hates me. the sight of blood. A con oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I hate the sight of talking about that your fucking pussy's bleeding around me. That's what I fucking hate. When, even when they have it in their purse, I get sick to my fucking stomach. Oh, so I don't want to see a fucking tampon around me. <laughs> I don't want to fucking see a tampon at all. All right? When I'm watching TV and a tampon commercial comes on, even when I'm by myself, I feel creepy. That's so weird. And can condom commercials, that new commercial with the chick's head popping out, or the fucking thing with the, you put on your finger... Have you seen that fucking commercial? The chick with the creepy finger? Yeah. She tried, you know, this is great to relieve stress. You know what, man? I don't want to know about that shit. Play it out after. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, my God. That's a zombie. Oh, my God. What is that? Is that a zombie? Pussy. So put that away. Oh, my God. That's, That's broken. Terrible. That one's broken. That is just, that offends don't even, me. Don't even get that one fixed. To this day, anything vaginal <laughs> sprays. Anything vaginal on television before like ten <laughs> o'clock drives me up a fucking wall. I've, I've never had a, a, a period problem. It doesn't oh, bother me. Never had a period. Never had my own period. Well, I have my own period every now and then, but I've never had uh, uh, like a period problem, like a problem with a girl's period. No, it yeah. doesn't bother me at all. I told you the one I had to this day, and I, I it was fucked up because my mother had just died, and it was the first time. A chick called me. Like, that was my first booty call ever. I had dated this girl before. She was a cheerleader at Franklin School. I played hoops at McKinley, and we had messed around a little bit. Not really sex. I don't remember Joe. I think I sucked the titties. I knew her brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we were, like, in grammar school, high school, and I had sucked the titties or something after, like, a dance or something. And, and after my mother died, like, I was home for a week, and this lady was taking care of me, and I get this call one night, and it's this chick, and she goes, you know, you want to get together? And I... I was feeling bad, you know. I didn't know she was going to throw me a little lottery pussy, like my little funeral pussy. I never got funeral pussy, but it exists, you know. Funeral pussy? Yeah, like after somebody dies in your family, some chick calls you and sucks your dick. Really? Yeah. Because like, they exists. feel bad? Like they're like a, maybe they're like a, like a, what are those <laughs> women that hang out at comedy clubs and they like comedy? <laughs> groupies? Groupies, yeah. Like the, they, they like Shut to have fuckers. sex with people after somebody dies. I'm, I'm serious. But I knew her. She probably just called me out of the kindness of my heart to make me feel well. So I walked from 38th Street to 46, grabbed this bitch, and walked back to my house on 38th Street. I'm all fucking horned up. We start swatting. <laughs> I take her pants off. I pop her panties off, and the Kotex pops out of her <laughs> pussy like a tongue in one of those fucking haunted houses, right? Like, like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm Like this, like this. Blah! They pop up like, blah! Like that. Right? <laughs> And I just sat there frozen. Like, I had never seen that before. I had never smelled that before. I had never been around anything like that. My mother had just died. That was traumatic enough. This would just set me over the fucking cliff. <laughs> How that woman's still alive today, to this day, I don't even look on Facebook to see she'll, because I might kill her. Because she, <laughs> she fucked me up, Joe Rogan. Fucked me up. I told her to put her pants on. I remember walking her home. The whole time I wanted to, I didn't, I didn't know how to control myself. I didn't know how to control myself. <laughs> Till this day I think about that motherfucker. That's hilarious. Because she thought I don't know, that's the first time I ever seen a woman with a period and the last. I made it a fucking point. That's so funny. If I'm I don't care how horny I am, if I'm in a bar, I got a bag of coke and somewhere along the light that chick says she got her period, that's where the conversation ends. It ends. There's no that's more so talking. Funny. They used to have this freak. They used to be this chick I used to mess around with in Hollywood. And I knew her cycle. She would have a period from the 20th to the 25th. I wouldn't answer her calls those five nights, dog. Like six or seven nights just to make sure everything cleared. Wow. And she never figured it out till this day. That's hilarious. She's never figured out that I wouldn't bring coke over there. Of the I can't. I'm going to waste coke on the <laughs> 
It's so silly. I'm a bloody pussy. Fuck it. I'll smell it by myself and jerk but off. But doesn't it still feel good? Is it just the way it looks? You don't like the way it looks? No, no, no. It's no, no, warmer. No. I like it. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's blood. Is that bad enough for you? There's fucking blood. Is that bad enough for you right there that you're fucking blood? No matter what you're doing, you're fucking blood. I know you like it. I know red men. Pull out the scamp on, a little gravy comes out. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> oh my no, God. you son of a bitch. <laughs> We never heard about like mental illness when I was a kid. No, you heard about not, like completely no. crazy people that were locked in an asylum. But the idea of like your aunt taking pills because she's bipolar, like what are you talking what about? What are you talking about? Because it was accepted and everyone did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh yeah, we used to take Valium and what's no, that? I think it's the opposite. <laughs> I think you just got used to people being fucking crazy. You know, you didn't feel like you had to medicate them. You know, I think people were way more crazy in the sixties and seventies. I do Johnny Reed that tried to kill himself, but he jumped off a building and he landed in a dumpster. Oh, my <laughs> right? God. And he lived. Oh, my God. How bad was he broken? <laughs> Fucked up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up. And he threw oh punches. He threw punches oh into the air. No. Johnny Reed was a trip. He was an Irish. <laughs> And he got a check from the government, and he gave We're it to the bartender to on the first. That's what people thought, but he lived. Oh like, he banged God. his head on the dumpster, oh my and he God. fucking held the dog. He lived, and he gave his check from the government on the first to the bartender, and he torment the bartender till that check was done. Then they'd throw him out to the first, and they would last till about the 18th and 19th. When I was a kid, I used to torment Johnny Reed. He'd go into the, you know, on, on the East Coast, you lock the bathrooms from the out. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you say? You lock the bathrooms from the outside on the East Coast. When you leave a bar at night when they close up, right? they lock the bathroom, and then they put like a, a, a lock ball. So if you break in, they can't. He would go in the bathroom, Johnny Reed, like 11 o'clock in the morning to pee, and we'd lock him in there, and we'd leave him in there until like 6 o'clock at night. We'd come back to have a drink. We'd open the bathroom, and he'd come out like nothing. I swear to God, like nothing happened. He was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, one day I put my dick on a chair next to him. He, <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting on a bar stool. My friend's like, put your dick on a chair. Oh. See what happens. And he's like, wow. And he just got up. So Johnny Reed lived for like maybe 12 years ago. We used to give him bumps of coke and get him riled up at the bar. And then he'd just leave. Fuck you, motherfuckers. I'll fight all of you. And he'd just fucking leave. Hilarious. Anyway. Did you, uh, did you ever have a girl you dated kill herself? No. They should have. <laughs> <laughs> After I put that fucking helmet, ratted, chlamydia fucking dick in you, you should kill yourself. You should kill yourself the first time and when you get to your destination. <laughs> I think when I needed the drugs, it was when my whole body was in pain. And it's not pain that you feel. It's just this pain. And it's... It, well, it's also pain. you did it for so long that your body became accustomed to but using in the those beginning, things. But in the beginning, why is the main reason we get down? Why is the main reason a guy like you handles, you have pain in your life growing up? We all do. What made you different than not doing it? You know, when you, uh, when you first get involved in that, your body hurts, man. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, you know, when I was 17, I'd go home at the end of the night. With, I was in school. I had to go to school at 7.30. Sophomore in high school, junior. I had to go to school. And I would come home and sit in the corner in the dark with earphones on, with an A-track, Black Sabbath, and I just do coke till three in the morning. Jesus Christ! No drinking, just do coke in the dark. What wow. possesses you to do that, Joe Rogan? I don't know. Was it because I was a junkie? No, I was. You know what? I was in so much pain. What? But pain covers this huge thing when you're doing drugs. Pain could be, uh, you know, fucking uh, confusion. Pain shows up as confusion. Confusion shows up as pain, is what I'm saying to you. You're confused. So I was 16. It could bro. be emotional pain. It could be Does, emotional pain. It doesn't pain. have to be physical Your pain. Your whole body's in pain yeah. when you're doing it. You know, I talked to the other day. I talked to the kid I kidnapped. You know, I call him a lot now. Wow. I'm guilty. I'm really fucking guilty of that because I saw something when I kidnapped him that it's not Joe Diaz. I saw him suffering. I saw him at one moment on the floor handcuffed. And I would never want that for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I always dread that that happens to a friend of mine for what I did. And I always felt bad. I had him call on the podcast, and I apologized to him. Wow. And I always call him up. And I called him the other day, and we were talking, and he told me, you know, every time I talk to him, he tells me more about his life, bro. You know, what happened since I kidnapped him. I bumped into him in 94. I kidnapped him in 87. I bumped into him in 94, and I bought Coke from him. <laughs> right? And he was all fucked up at, at, uh, at, on Pearl Street down in Boulder. And then he never remembered. I think he blacked out. That's how bad a shape he was in. I asked him. 
the last, the, not this time, but the time before, I asked him, do you remember me buying blow from you? He goes, I remember seeing you, and I remember hating you the next day. <laughs> I couldn't believe I didn't knock you the fuck out because I caught him <laughs> off guard. He was at a bar all fucked up. I'm like, you got to sell me some blow. He's like, ah, look who's here. The guy who kidnapped me. The guy, <laughs> the guy who kidnapped me. But I called you him last You fought week. blow after him after you kidnapped Nine, him and before you apologized for kidnapping six him? Six years later, yeah. I saw him at, I saw him at a, a bar on Pearl Street. Did you even say, I'm sorry I kidnapped you? Not that night. <laughs> I just gave him a hug and asked him if he knew where I'd get some blow and shit. <laughs> Not that night. And he gave me a hug and I always <sighs> thought about him. And when I apologized, I felt really bad. And I talked to him the other day and he, and he started telling me he's 50. He lives with his mother. He had a heart attack. You know, I could tell when I talked to him in his pictures on Facebook that he had a stroke. You know, that was all from the blow, bro. Sometimes when he calls me and I could tell he's drinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel real guilty that I do this. But then, you know, I'm the type of guy I don't play that shit. You know, I don't play that shit at all. He was fucked up when I kidnapped him. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, a couple of weeks before, you know, how we got, how this whole thing started was because he got a DUI, fucked up some cars. Went to Boulder Hospital, on, on North Hospital, Boulder General. Mm -hmm. And while he was in there, you know Boulder, he was hurt. They left him in a room by himself, and he stole a bottle of liquid cocaine and jumped out the window. <laughs> okay, and they caught him an hour later on the other side of Boulder. <laughs> when you steal a bottle of liquid cocaine from the hospital, you already got problems. Okay? Oh, my God. Me kidnapping him, you know, and we laugh and we giggle. Me kidnapping him it makes me feel like maybe I contributed to that, but I didn't. He had his own doom. Why didn't I get fucked up? You know, I mean, I got fucked up in different ways. I paid in different ways because the guilt of me doing that to a man fucking destroyed me. You know, I like to fuck around. You know, I could do something bad if somebody harms me. But even with jujitsu, I just can't put my forearm in somebody's face, man. I hate when I have to lay on somebody. Like, I'll check on them and go, are you okay, bro? You know I love you right now. <laughs> and they'll look at me and go, I know. <laughs> you know, it's funny. funny. So for me, seeing him in that corner, I always had that guilt that I tied him up. <laughs>